Hey guys, this is Tonner, and today we're going to be talking about if, you know, foundations or some cards from foundations that are going to be good for Commander, um, kind of going through if I think you should look at foundations overall as a Commander set or how exactly kind of um, I'm kind of approaching foundations. So foundations is a great set to start off a collection with and have some really banger reprints as well as some new really great cards. While people say, you know, this is a Commander a set about every single set basically foundations is really a great kind of commander set obviously you know not aimed at commander it's aimed towards standard and everything but there is a lot of really great stuff in here to start the foundation for your mtg decks um given that this set is meant to set like I keep saying foundation is going to lose, you know, all meaning um, for the next kind of five years for standard. It has some stuff that you want for your decks, either new or reprinted. So some really kind of staply cards across the various different rarities. Um, you know, if you're looking to kind of start out, especially this is going to be great. If you are a more veteran player, then I would definitely not suggest kind of picking up a huge amount of it or just aiming for singles. Even a newer player, I think that singles are going to be best. And, you know, the best way to get singles is to go down to my link, go to, over to C TCG player and support the channel there. Um, They've also got the life lane, life gain lands within there. Now, they are not great. These are not great lands. They are great filler for budget decks, though. Uh, and if you are just starting out, they are going to be decent to kind of just, you know, if you're making a two-color deck, have one of those in there. Just that way you're not kind of going out and spending much more. But nowadays, nearly every other two-color land is you know, relatively cheap as well. So you can get a huge amount of them pretty easily. Um, now we're just going to be looking at the stuff in play boosters here, not the other collections, not the starter collection or uh, the beginner box. That's a whole separate kind of deal. We've talked about that previously though, as to whether I think you should pick it up for commander. So, Let's get started. So first of all, the archetypes. So these are the kinds of things that you're going to see within the cards here. Some of them are going to be based around kind of flying and synergizing well with flying creatures. You've got some graveyard stuff as well. You've got raid. So that is, did you attack this turn? So, you know, some are like, did you attack? Well, then in your end step, create a goblin. Or did you attack? Now, when this enters, it does something slightly different. There's a bunch of stuff around power four plus kind of thing. So like, do you have a creature that's power four plus or, you know, some big big creatures, uh, some plus one, plus one counters, life gain, spell slinger, morbid, did something die, and aggro on ramp. So, you know, the archetypes are very magic. This set feels like a very Magic the Gathering set, which probably, you know, doesn't, I guess that's kind of the aim here. So I guess that kind of works, but, um, this kind of stuff, like it's stuff that you're going to find within a lot of commanders. A lot of commanders, you know, can fit into some of these categories. There is obviously, you know, commanders that don't fit into these, but this is a big kind of portion of the kind of commanders that come out, which isn't a bad thing. So let's start with the commons here. So first of all, we've got a couple black commons that are really great. So uh, I'm just kind of showing a couple for each because I don't want to go through the whole list. Um, but these are stuff that, you know, you can fit within a lot of your deck. So like, you know, fake your own death into black. There's a lot of different uses for that if you're trying to protect your commander or something. Sanguine Symphony, if you've got something that either works off of life gain because you're going to gain life from it or from like, say, for example, my... Um, my Abaddon deck, which relies on opponents losing life, this is going to be great with that. You've got Banishing Light and Inspiring Paladin here for white. So Banishing Light, a decent kind of removal that just can remove anything until that gets removed. Or Inspiring Par Paladin, making it so all your stuff with plus one counters has first strike, which is decent. Um, there's other ways to be able to do that. But if you're getting some foundation stuff and you happen to pull this card, it's not going to be a bad kind of slot in for a plus one deck. We've got a couple really black, uh, sorry, really black, a uh, really uh, red staples here. So fire brand, brand archer. If you are doing a spell slinger deck, that's great in it. Thriller possibility, you know, discard a guard to draw two cards. It's not the best use of that kind of spell. There is other ones that are a lot better than that, but this is still an option there. If you are making either a budget deck or you are pretty new out and you want to kind of fill out your collection with some really, you know, decent stuff. The other thing to kind of keep in mind here is that Foundations is going to be reprinted out the wazoo. There is five years of this being in standard. It's going to be reprinted for five years. These cards are going to drop down in price because of that, most likely. Um, I'd say only the Mythics will likely stay more expensive. Everything else, I'd say, even the rares, I don't think that there's going to be anything that's going to be 
more expensive because it's just going to be reprinted so much as well as the fact that it's priced cheaper. As for blue, you know, think twice, a really great blue staple there for drawing cards. It has flashback. So if you've got graveyard play, that's really good there. Mocking Sprite, reduce all that stuff by one. Great. Sanguine Symphony. I, what? I've got the commons here again. No, wait. I've got black in here twice for some reason. Uh, and then we've got uh, green here, Landwind or Elves and Bushwhack, both really great that are kind of, you know, used a lot of the time. Um, Bushwhack's great, especially in if you've got like a the new Wolverine deck because it's ramp um, or fight. So you can choose which one you need at the time. So as for the uncommons in white, we've got a great protection spell. I really love this one because it's got pay one to protect something, or if you need to protect everything else, you just pay that extra kicker and boom, now you've protected everything with indestructible. Stroke of Midnight is basically like a generous gift, but better, um, but generous gift can destroy lands. This can't destroy lands. So I guess if they're going for a land win, that's more of the issue. But other than if they're doing that, then it's fine. Uh, we've got a braid here, a great kind of red staple. Bolt Wave is going to be a huge, huge, huge staple because it deals that damage three damage to each opponent for the cost of a simple red i i can't believe that got printed that's crazy compared to other stuff in blue we've got an offer you can't refuse a really 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 great um counter spell there imprisoned in the moon a great kind of removal black we've got reassembly skeleton used in so many aristocrat decks or if you've got skeletons i guess too and then vampire gourmand's a new one here whenever it attacks you can sack something if you do draw a card and it can't be blocked so if you buff this guy up then boom, you've got a really great attacker, but also you could sack like, you know, tokens or something else to just get that proc constantly and draw cards. As for green, we've got Garrick's Uprising and Inspire on Call. I don't need to explain these. They're used all the time. They're really great. And why, uh, sorry, colorless. We've got Swiftwood Boots and Rogue's Passage, again, used everywhere. And for color, uh, sorry, for multicolored, we've got Belmore Battle Mage Captain, really great in a whole bunch of Spellslinger decks. And then we've got Fiendish Panda here, which is a new one that when it gains life, put a plus one onto it. When it dies, return something from your graveyard if with mana value equal to or less than its power. That is really great, especially because you could then, you know, bring this thing back and start it all over again. Before we get into the rares and stuff like that, I want to go ask you guys to subscribe and everything. We're trying to hit 10,000 by the end of the year. That would be really amazing if you're able to. Um, and into the rares here, white, we've got Felidar Retreat, Authority of Consuls, Mentor of the Meek, used in a lot of decks, you know, life gain decks, really great. Felidar Retreat in plus one decks or cat decks or, you know, landfall decks and Mentor of the Meek in any white weenies deck. As for red, we've got Seer Slicer Goblin, which is the new one, and an Electro Duplicate for new ones. Seer Slicer going to give you a 1 1 each uh, end step if you've attacked. And then Electro Duplicate is a great kind of create a copy. But then it's also got flashback on top of that, which is the part that kind of put it onto this list for me because now you can flash it back. Brass's Bounty is really crazy um, if you've got, you know, ways to be able to storm it with say storm or um if you've got like you know a whole bunch of lands that you just want to tap out you don't have anything else to do at the moment tap them out play this boom now you've got a bunch of treasures if you've got treasure uh, synergies and stuff this is great we've got homunculus horde whenever you draw your second card each turn create a token that's a copy of it if you've buffed up you know this token copy with like what is it um I think if you buff it up with like mutate and stuff like that, then you can create a token copy of it that's already mutated as well. I believe that's how it works. Archmage of the Dr Runes. Uh, we've got, you know, spell sling, uh, spell sling a staple potentially because of the fact that it combines that draw from casting an instant and sorcery as well as the reduction to Fae Tricker, a Fae Trickster here, making it so all your spells have flash. Great to play on other people's turns. Some really big black staples. I'm not going to focus on these two because this one's a new one. A board wipe that they sacrifice them. So it goes around indestructible and it can cost as little as one black. It is basically like a blasphemous act except as black and makes people sacrifice stuff. We've got Mossborn Hydra here for a plus one staple, Elvis Druid, Arch Druid for like, you know, any kind of elf deck will use the heck out of that. And then Golter in some big kind of green stompy decks um, that Golter is used in so many decks that I look at um, and I absolutely love him because you can cheat him out, but then he's also still got that mana value 12 if you need to make use of that. We've got some staples for colorless here. Basilisk Collar. Again, you know, there's just so many decks that make use of that. Banner of Kinship. If you've got a um, 
centric a creature centric deck that's based around one kindred that's really great there crawling sc scrolling crawler here making it so people take damage whenever they draw life so with like the new um group slug deck that's great in that Leyline, Axe, and Solemn Silmarcarium. Solemn's used everywhere in, um, like in Commander. Uh, and then Leyline Axe, I think, is going to easily be a great new staple for any kind of deck that's built around um, built around equipment and stuff because you can cheat it out. You can just put it on the battlefield at the start if you've um, if you have it in your opening hand. Some multicolored ones, you know, Last Thrill, just you know, Elf Commander. Kaika is going to be great in a whole bunch of spell slinger decks that include white and blue because you've got that flicker in there. So any kind of flicker deck is going to make use of it as well as any spirit decks. Thousand Year Storm is great for, you know, just storming off, I guess. Like it's a really fun card to kind of storm off with. As for the Mythics, Mythics are a little harder because they're a lot more centric to the set, but there is some in here that are really great. So like Valkyrie's Call is great for like that reanimation there. It's similar to um, like a, luminous brood moth um and essentially does kind of the same thing except they also return with a plus one and um a, a, and that flying and they become an angel so if you've got some non-angels in your angel deck because you know you've got clerics or whatever they become angels which is cool herald of eternal dawn just a flashed in version of um what is it platinum angel some red kind of stuff i don't know people are going to this is probably not going to be a red staple, but it is going to be really fun when you create a big dragon every time you cast an instant or sorcery. And that new Chandra, I love her. You know, put her up to create, you know, get three red mana, exile the top three, choose one and you can play it. Or you can even plus one. You can do this part here, the turn she comes in as well. Like, she's really cool. Really cool. Uh, blue, we've got Kaito, make, is great in any kind of unblockable base deck, but also because of the fact that she kind of synergizes well with it, you're going to be able to reach this minus nine really, really easily from it. Omniscience, you know, there's so many uses for it if you're able to cheat it out. Uh, I need it for my, um, oh, what is it? My Zamone deck, my Zamone, uh, the Manifest Dread deck. It's going to be great in that. Uh, black, we've got Bloodthirsty Conqueror, a new version of Sanguine Bond or Exquisite Blood. I think a Sanguine Bond there. I think. One of those two. We've got Rise of the Dark Realms, Mass Res, Liliana, when it's something dies, draw cards, create zombies, etc. Uh, and then green, we've got Quilted, Quilled, Great Worm, and we've got Doubling Season. Insanely great cards. Doubling Season just doubles everything. Quilled Great Worm's got that getting the plus ones and then you can cast it from your graveyard too. Multicolored ones. And then a colorless one that I think is just going to be a, more of a meme, but still a fun meme. And then legendary. So looking at the legendaries, there's 41 different legendaries here. We've got 12 multicolored. Oh, sorry, 41. That's including the other stuff. So it's not actually 41. We've got 12 monocolored. Uh, so what's that? 24, 24 different legendaries here. Um, across, this is across the full set. These are just within the uh, boosters. So there's a sort of special, Port for a variety of different themes already in the set, as well as to be able to run the commander for that style deck. So like, you know, we've got life gain throughout the set, and then we've got a lifeline commander. We've got elves throughout the set. We've got an elf commander, etc. So they might not be the best option to run for that deck, but they are still a fun option. So, you know, we've got a spell slinger with Belmont. We've got elves with Lathril, Giada for angels, Niz Mizzet for non-combat damage, as well as the fact that he goes infinite with himself. We've got uh, like his other version. We've got Ko Koma, I think Koma is better in the 99, but still like an interesting one. Elenda for like life gain. Uh, we've got Maldrotha if you want to play from the graveyard. Tatiova for like ramp and, you know, um, landfall and stuff. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I honestly think that Foundations is a really great set to kind of pick up stuff for, for your commander kind of stuff. Um, apologies about the kids in the background. Um, I think that overall you're going to get a lot of value from it. I wouldn't go buying heaps like, you know, booster boxes worth of it or anything like that, unless you're very, very new. But singles, there's going to be some really, really cheap singles from it. I hope you guys had a great day. Goodbye.